Hey guys, how you doing? It's recording, right? Yeah, okay, good. As you can tell, I'm in a completely different location today. Um, I'm actually staying in my brother's place all week where I'm looking after his dog whilst my brother and his family go away on holiday. So I'm chilling here with Oscar, who you may remember from a video where we tested eco-friendly dog toys and he was the complete star of the show. He's just having a little nap in the next room. He might come and join us, but I know he's got a pretty full schedule with napping, so we'll see. Also, there's a wasp that's decided to join me in this little section of the house today, so <laughs> fingers crossed I don't freak out and knock everything over because wasps just put me on edge, let's just say that. Oh, that's right above me. Also, apologies if you can hear the constant the whole time. The exit is that way. This week, it's Organic Beauty and Wellbeing Week. Whoop, whoop. Um, which is really exciting because normally it's rolled in to Organic September and it's part of that whole month. But the Soil Association who organize Organic September have decided to give Organic Beauty its very own week in May. So from the 15th to the 21st of May, all week, it's Organic Beauty and Wellbeing Week. So they've tied in well-being into the mix, which to me makes a lot of sense because our general overall well-being will directly impact on how beautiful we feel. As part of Organic Beauty and Wellbeing Week, the Soil Association have created a little pop-up shop, which is really cool. It's in Shoreditch in East London, and I'm going to the launch of that tonight. I'm super excited to check it out. I've seen the pictures on Instagram and I'm just, yeah, really excited. Hey guys, so I'm here at the Organic Beauty and Wellbeing event, which is their little pop-up shop. It's running all week and we've got an amazing collection of certified organic beauty brands and uh, they've got little discounts going on. I think it's something like 20% off all week. Hi. Hey guys. <laughs> I knew you'd hate that. <laughs> Unsung heroes in the world of biochemistry. 
the main reason that we became organic was we saw that what was happening to bees um, with the use of toxic agrochemicals, we actually physically saw that happening in the field. So how bees were coming back, they were being affected by these effectively neurotoxins, and they were coming back to the hive as if drunk, they couldn't navigate properly. Um, and at that point, you know, for us, natural was no longer good enough. We wanted to be organic, we wanted to take all those toxic chemicals out of supply chain. And they've got a calendar of events that you can book yourself into. So things like talks and panel discussions as well as masterclasses. So I'll put a link to that in the info box below if you want to book your slot and I'll see you there. I'm actually hosting the discussion around organic beauty and well-being on Thursday. But if you can't make it down to the shop, don't worry. You can also take advantage of all of the promos and discounts that are running throughout the whole week. I'll put a link to that page in the info box below. Because it's organic beauty and well-being week, I thought I'd share with you guys how I try and take care of myself. Try being the key word there because I'm not perfect but these are the things that I have definitely noticed have a positive impact on my general health and well-being. I choose to eat organic food most of the time, as much as possible. It's something that's really important to me. And for me, it's a really easy way of avoiding toxic synthetic chemicals and pesticides. So things like glyphosate, for example, which is now labeled as a probable carcinogen by the World Health Organization. That's the sort of stuff I don't wanna be eating. And by choosing organic, I know that it won't have any toxic synthetic pesticides used in the process. Often pesticides can't simply be washed off a vegetable, for example, but instead they get absorbed into it. And I think it was in 2015, um, government testing found that 43% of the British food that they tested contained pesticide residues. And often it was more than one pesticide. And pesticides do get into our bodies. There's a video on YouTube, which I'll link in the info box below, showing a family who switch from their regular food to all organic and the pesticide levels in their urine that they test just drops dramatically. So it is something that we are exposing ourselves to on a daily basis. So if I can find a way of avoiding that, then I'm going to choose it. Organic food is relevant to your gut health for two particular reasons. One of them is it removes this residue of pollutants from your food. They're there on everything at the moment if you're eating non-organic food and they do impact the gut microbiome, that's really clear, you know, it's quite well demonstrated for a lot of common environmental pollutants and chemicals now. Also, research has shown that organic food is more nutritious, so even though it might seem more expensive, I feel that I'm actually getting really good quality, nutritious food on my plate every day. And it supports a method of farming that I feel is actually regenerative. It actually gives nutrients back to the soil and healthy soils are so linked to our own health. To read a quote that I read recently from a recipe book by One Gun Ranch, it says, in order to be well, you must eat well, but first we must grow well. And for me, that just sums it up so beautifully. Organic beauty, all right. So I'm a big believer that what we put on our bodies is as important as what we put in our bodies. And our skin is our biggest organ and it can definitely absorb some of what we put on it. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried rubbing a clove of garlic on the base of your foot, but you can then taste it in your mouth. And I've definitely got some friends who are so into eating really well, exercising, making sure they get enough sleep, doing all these really good things in order to be healthy. And then they're slathering on a chemical concoction in the form of beauty products. Products that contain chemicals that are known cancer causes or hormone disruptors, so things like phthalates, synthetic fragrance, and parabens, for example. And even on the Breast Cancer UK website, they advise against people using products with those things in them. At the moment, there's a lot of greenwashing going on in the whole beauty industry. Unlike food, where the word organic is actually protected, in Europe and in the UK, there's no protection or regulation around the word organic. In the US, it's different. I think it is actually protected. You can only use it if you are an actual organic product. But here in the UK, if a product uses something ridiculous, like only 1% of the ingredients used are organic, uh, and the rest of it is really dodgy, questionable ingredients that you wouldn't actually find in a certified organic product, then they can still put organic on the label. And that's something that is often very confusing for people and can be misleading. So the Sword Association are running a campaign for clarity at the moment. I'll put a link to that in the info box below as well. So if you're just starting to get into organic beauty or or maybe you're finding it a bit overwhelming and you're not sure where to start, 
Simply looking for the Soil Association logo or the Cosmos logo is a great place to start because those products truly will have met organic standards, which means that it'll have a very high content of certified organic ingredients and then a very restricted list of non-organic ingredients that are permitted. And even the packaging has to meet a really strict set of criteria. I know a lot of organic beauty brands won't necessarily be completely zero waste. Things like PVC, materials made from GMOs or polystyrene, those aren't allowed for any certified organic beauty product. I've detoxed the home as much as possible. We do live in a rented flat, which means that I can't control things like what our carpet is made of or what our kitchen flooring is made of. Probably plastic, to be honest. I've certainly removed things like toxic cleaning products and replaced them with more natural homemade alternatives. I've just done a whole video on my zero waste cleaning kit, so if you want to go check that out, I'll put a link to that in the info box as well. Also, we don't have anything that contains synthetic fragrance in the home because, as you guys know, since I've detoxed my life, my sense of smell has dramatically improved. So when I am around synthetic fragrance, it now gives me a headache and quite a scratchy throat. And I even had to remove a scented candle from my brother's living room when I was watching TV in there the other day because it was giving me a headache. We also don't have any non-stick Teflon coated pots and pans at home. I prefer to use stainless steel or ceramic or cast iron pans to cook with. Um, Teflon is something that has got health concerns around it, uh, especially when it's heated to high temperatures. So that's something I would personally like to avoid. It's crazy that it's used in pans, isn't it, when they are actually heated most of the time to a high temperature. We use these items every day and I think long-term exposure to certain chemicals or things that we know to be harmful to our health ain't good. We also try to have as many natural and organic fibres as we can at home, so things like our bedding are made from GOTS certified organic cotton, I've got an organic wool pillow, we have an organic wool mattress protector and I've also got an organic uh, topper that goes on top of our regular mattress. So most regular mattresses contain man-made synthetic fibres which not only create a very uncomfortable night's sleep, they're not that healthy to sleep on, they also harbour moisture and heat which is something that apparently bed bugs love. Whereas an organic mattress, one that uses natural latex, organic wool, organic coir, is breathable, it doesn't require any chemical fire retardants because of the wool which is a natural fire retardant and it uses things like essential oils to deter bed bugs basically. So I think it's a much healthier option, it won't off gas any weird chemicals into our home. So once our current mattress has reached the end of its life, I think in like two years, I'd love to invest in an organic natural mattress. Talking of sleep, it's something that I've definitely started prioritising a lot more in the last couple of years. I used to be the sort of person that would stay up really late too late. I am a natural owl, shall we say. But recently I've really, really been trying to go to bed at a regular early-ish time, so around 10.30. Um, and that means that I wake up naturally a bit earlier and I've definitely noticed that it's had a positive impact on my general well-being. I feel a lot more rested, I feel a lot calmer, and sleep is something that I think is so crucial to our overall well-being and health. And so many of us don't really prioritise it. We just kind of push through life and just think, yeah, we can get by on little sleep. But I think more and more research is actually showing just how important it is. I actually met a sleep expert at an event a few weeks ago and we got chatting and some of her advice and tips were to make sure you've got a cooler bedroom, uh, to get outside during the day and get lots of exposure to daylight and try and get into the habit of going to bed at the same time every night. So having a regular bedtime is apparently really beneficial. Taking time out for myself is something that's super important to me and I try and prioritise it. It can be tough when you're trying to work on your own and I've got things hanging over me and I want to get them done, but I know that if I take time out to be a bit creative or maybe it's reading or cooking for myself, um, taking the time out to cook myself a really nourishing meal is kind of an act of self-love.
being outside is something that I find so therapeutic and recently in the evenings uh, I've started sitting out on our balcony and using our little barbecue as a fire pit and I've wrapped myself up in a cozy natural wool blanket and I'm just looking up at the stars and the moon and for me the smell of being outside Yes, I know, it's London, so it's not like completely back to nature, sadly. It's something that I find really, really calming. Now I try and make sure I go for a long walk in a park, or we try and take weekend trips away where we can get out into the countryside. So we've been going down to Cornwall a lot more. If you haven't seen my Cornwall vlog, I'll link that in the info box below as well, if you wanna get a little taste of what my life down there is like when we go and stay there. And taking Oscar for a walk in the park has been so good at getting me to step away from whatever's stressing me out at home and just taking time to spend with him. We get to play and I get to be outside in nature as well. So it's win-win. Hello. Just taking the pooch for a little stroll. You ready? Oh, it's not a bad kick. If I do say so myself. I also love cooking with fire. So as well as cozying up next to my little fire pit, I've been cooking on it as well and I just find that I could stare at the flames for hours and I go into a slight hypnotic trance where everything is just calm and peaceful. Massage is something that's so important to me and I would love to try and get more regular massages. Um, and I know it sounds like it's really, really indulgent, but I definitely notice that I'm a much happier person when I have a massage. I'm a naturally cold creature and when I'm cold, I tense up my shoulders and my neck. And also when I'm stressed, I tense up in that area as well. So having a regular massage to knead out those knots it's just something that I think is really beneficial for my well-being. As you guys know, I also limit my exposure to plastic. Mostly I try and avoid it because it's not great for the environment, but also plastic can leach into things like our foods and our drinks. So as you know, I try and shop without any plastic packaging and I take my own packaging. And I think by limiting my exposure to plastic on a daily basis, I'm limiting my exposure to potential hormone disruptors and cancer causes that I don't think I should be exposing myself to. I'm not completely plastic free, but we've definitely reduced the amount of plastic in our lives and I'm certainly not exposing myself to plastic as much as I used to. Taking time to declutter my space, I found is pretty important for my general well-being. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in clutter and surrounded by a lot of things, especially mess, usually my own mess, I get a little stressy. Messy equals stressy. So I'm really trying to make an extra effort to firstly not create so much clutter and mess in the first place, but also tidy it up so it's not just ongoing. I'm actually taking time out to put things away and stay on top of it. And I've definitely noticed that it's beneficial to my overall well-being. Oh, and very quickly, oil of oregano. The second I get the tickle of a sore throat, I just put a few drops of that into a little bit of water and swallow it, and the sore throat just goes. I think it's one of the reasons why I haven't had a cold for flipping ages. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Those are just some of the ways in which I try and take care of myself. Obviously, I'm not perfect, and I'm sure there's more that I could be doing, but I quite like taking a chilled approach to life, as you guys probably know. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you wanna find out more about Organic Beauty and Wellbeing Week, I'll put some links in the info box below. And look after yourselves, you're worth it.